Good morning and welcome to A Finch's Nest Podcast. My name is Heather and this is my podcast about uh, the crafty side of my life. This is episode 19 if I didn't just say that and today is July the 10th and I am coming to you from southwestern Ontario where it is hot and sunny and so far we've had a very hot and dry summer and so we're hoping for some rain soon, but um, yeah, it's definitely been very hot. Um, I don't love the heat, I have to say. I like warm weather, but the heat I could do without, and the humidity, of course, I could do without. But anyway, it is summer, and it certainly feels like summer. So we've gone to the beach a lot, and we're trying to get out and enjoy this nice weather. So where have I been for the last six months? <laughs> I remember when I podcast last time, I told you that I was going to be really diligent this year and I was going to podcast at the end of every month and I was going to update you on all my finishes for the month. And yeah, here we are six months later. So you know how the best laid plans go. But anyways, um, life, life happens, right? So, so just a little recap, I guess, um, last fall, my parents, um, decided to move to where I live because they're older now and needing some um, extra help sometimes and they just needed to be near one of their kids so I got chosen <laughs> so, um, so anyways they moved here which is fine and then my mom had surgery in November she had a hip replacement which the recovery has not gone as planned I guess and so um, from November till like April, May, I think it was May, it was May, I was having to do all their driving for them. So taking her to physio, taking her to doctors, taking her to the hospital for x-rays and stuff and getting their groceries and all that extra stuff. So, you know, on top of running my own household as a single parent, um, it was a lot. <laughs> So my crafting time was decreased and certainly free time to do things like podcasting was definitely decreased. So um, my mom is now able to drive again, which is amazing because my father can't drive because he has Alzheimer's. And so um, she's driving again, doing, you know, small local errands so she can do those by herself now. So that's really freed me up. And so I'm really happy about that. Um, so then I've just been spending the last month or so trying to catch up on a whole bunch of things that haven't been done in the last few months. But anyways, now I feel like we're getting into a bit of a rhythm with um, summer vacation. And I have one of my kids is working at um, a day camp at our church. So um, she's out of the house Monday to Friday doing that during the day and my other daughter's home for the summer but um yeah I feel like we're finally getting into a groove and I'm finally somewhat getting on top of things so I'm hoping this summer is going to be really productive but you know we'll see how that goes <laughs> again those best laid plans never quite work out how we hope but anyways I am back and um happy to be back and I have a few finishes for you um this might be a bit of a longer podcast so if it's too long, just break it up and over a couple days or something. But I, I did want to share with you some of the projects that I've made because um, I, I have had a lot of fun with my crafting, even though my crafting time has been limited. And um, I'm really excited about some of my finishes. Now, some of my finishes, because it's been so long, have been gifted. So I will have photos to put in. And I also have a couple videos of two really fun projects that I made. So I'm hoping I can figure out how to put those videos into this video. Um, but if I can't figure it out, I'm sure one of the teenagers in my house can figure it out. So hopefully we can get those videos in so you can see um, some really special gifts that I made. One in particular I'm so excited about and I'll talk about it in a little bit. But um, yeah, so we'll try to get those in for you. So last time I podcast, I remember telling you about the, um, sorry, the Super Bowl Sunday quilt along that my local quilt store does every year. 
So pre-pandemic, they used to um, gather in like a hall or like a larger venue and they had um, this event in person. But because of the pandemic and all the restrictions over the last few years, they started doing it online. So when I first moved here, I was able to participate online for the first time. So basically what they do is they put together kits and they choose a pattern and so when you buy the kit, you really don't know what the pattern is. You know what your fabrics look like because she does a, a variety of different fabrics. And um, then on this on the day of the quilt along, everybody opens their pattern and everybody's working on the same quilt for the day. So I participated last year and I had a lot of fun and I really enjoyed the finished product. And so I decided to do it again. So I remember on the last podcast, I showed you the fabrics that were in my kit, which I was really excited about so I am so happy with how this turned out so this was the quilt that we all worked on so it's called Lucky Stars by Atkinson Designs now you'll see that mine looks nothing like this as far as colors go but this was a great pattern and you know I think well I do know because um, for the quilt along there were so many different kits with such a variety of fabrics and all of the quilts look so nice when they were done. So this is definitely a pattern I'll probably make again because I think again like with so many different fabrics it would look really nice. Now this pattern called for, mm, let me see, for the lap size it calls for 20 fat quarters. So you have a real nice variety of fabrics. Now the kits that we got didn't have 20 fat quarters. They had 10, 10 half yards. So, um, so I have less variety of fabrics in mine than what the pattern calls for, which it turned out fine and I love it, but I can see that having more fabrics might be a little easier when it comes to laying it out because I did find it tricky to not have similar fabrics too close to each other. So anyways, so if I were to do it again, I think I would go with either the required number or closer to the required number, but that would be the only thing I would change. So anyway, so here is my quilt all finished and I could not be happier with this quilt. And it goes really nicely in my house. So I just have it laying on my couch and we're always snuggled up under this, especially in the colder months. Not so much right now, but anyway, so here are the star blocks, what they look like. And as you can see, when I bound it, I put a rickrack trim on it, which I thought was really cute. And I thought it just lent itself to this kind of fabric because it's kind of a vintagey kind of look. Oh my goodness, my microphone's falling. Everything's falling. <laughs> uh, this is really hard to show. Anyways, I think you kind of, oh, and now my cat is sitting on it and I can't move it. Oh dear. Okay. Nuna. She really likes this blanket. So I think she's been missing it because the last few days it's been sitting in my sewing room waiting for me to podcast. Anyways, you can't really see the whole thing. I'll sit back as far as I can, but Anyways, I'll try to take some better pictures and put them on my Instagram page, but you kind of get the idea of how scrappy and pretty and so cute. I just, I'm so happy with how it turned out. Now, some of the fabrics that were in the kit, I wasn't thrilled about. So I did change out some of the fabrics. Just trying to think of some of the ones that I added that weren't in my kit. Oh, this was one of them that I added. Oh, and this, this one here was one that I added. There was um, some fabrics that had the Union Jack leg on them, which there's nothing wrong with the Union Jack or <laughs> the fabric, but it didn't mean anything to me because I'm not British. So I didn't really want them in my quilt. I wanted it, I wanted it more floral and pretty. So <laughs> cat. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, hopefully you can get an idea of how it looks. And oh, and on the back I put flannel, which is makes it even more cozy. 
and you can see some of the quilting there. Um, yeah, it's just uh, flowers and swirls. Now I do have a lady who does my machine quilting for me. She does a fantastic job and she's just local. So um, I'm really happy with that. So now I think I'm gonna actually throw this on the floor so the cat can be happy. <laughs> because now she's playing with my microphone cord mm. anyway so that that was a great project and um it was a lot of fun so yeah i'll definitely be participating in the super bowl sunday again next year and uh who knows what we'll be making this time the nice thing with these quilts is she generally picks something that's fairly simple so it can be completed fairly quickly so that's nice now this one definitely took more time than last year's and it was mostly because um, these borders around each block are all pieced as you can see so it just it took a long time to kind of lay out the fabrics the way you wanted it to be and you know put all those pieces together but it wasn't hard or anything it's just time consuming so anyways I'm really happy with that and we're definitely going to get a lot of use out of that quilt so that is good. Now I do, I was saying that my cat really likes that quilt and she really, really does like this quilt. So I was th actually thinking of taking the leftover fabrics because I actually have quite a few pieces left over um, and making her her own quilts. So um, one of these days I'll get on that, but not today. <laughs> so the next finished thing is a Musselburg hat or Musselburra hat, however you like to say it. So um, I I noticed just on different podcasts that I watch and stuff that this Musselburg hat was getting very popular. And at first I didn't really understand the excitement over it because it's just a plain hat, but then I knit one. This is the best, <laughs> best project. And it's so, just so mindless and relaxing and yeah fantastic project so anyways i made this muscle burke hat now the color is blowing out a little bit but it's a little bit more pink than it's showing up on the background here in the camera looks more cream but it's actually a very light pink so this if you aren't familiar with this hat it's basically a big long tube that you knit so it's just round and round and round and round you go <laughs> and there's the decreases and the increases uh, when you start and then you fold your tube inside itself and then you can roll up a brim or you can wear it slouchy but then you have this double thick hat now I made mine long enough that I'll have this folded up brim so around my ears here, it's four layers of fabric. So I think it's gonna be really warm, but it doesn't feel really heavy because it was just a fingering weight yarn. And yeah, it's just, it was a really nice, fun knit. And the perfect thing to take if you're going to knit night or if you're in the car, or even just to have, I had it in a basket in, the, in my living room. So when I was cooking or whatever, I could pick it up and just put a couple rounds on it. So it was kind of just, I found I was putting a lot of time into it because it was just easy to pick up and put down. So anyways, uh, this is the Musselburg hat and the pattern is by Yuzulda Teague and you can find that on Ravelry and it it is a pricey pattern. I will say that I thought it was pricey when I bought it. I thought it was pricey for just a plain hat. But then when you get the pattern, there's actually all these charts. So you can use, um, so it comes in all different sizes, plus you can use different weights of yarn. So you just have to figure out your gauge as you start knitting. If you knit, so when you cast on, you start doing all these increases and then you knit till you have about an inch of fabric and then you can get your gauge off of it and then check on the chart to see how many stitches you're gonna need and so, it is a very versatile pattern. So after I knit the first one, I realized that even though it, it seemed pricey at the time, it was definitely worth it. And it's definitely a pattern that I will make over and over and over again, because <laughs> I really enjoyed it. 
So anyways, the yarn for this one is from Lay Family Yarn. And the name is Patisserie, I think. It's like a, a French name there. Anyways, Lay Family Yarns is one of my favorites. Unfortunately, it's in the UK, so I don't order from them too often just because, you know, the shipping and it, everything. But so that's Lay Family Yarns. And this is part of their, oh, I can't even read that. Something Bridge Collection. Anyways, <laughs> it's a very pretty yarn and it knit up really nicely. So I'm excited about that. So I'm definitely keeping this one for myself. So what I ended up doing is after I finished all my increases, I weighed my so I weighed my cake of yarn when I started and then I weighed it when I finished all the increases so I can't remember how many grams it was but it was less than 10 so then I just knit my whole skein of yarn until I had about 10 grams of yarn left and then I did the decreases so I only have this much left so that's really nice that you can just use up the whole skein and you know if you didn't have a full skein either you could just not do that this folded brim you could just make it a regular hat but anyway so it's very versatile and definitely a fun knit and a lot of my friends have been knitting them too they're just kind of addictive <laughs> once you start <laughs> so um i think i talked about this on the last podcast too it's not technically finished yet um i wish you could see my cat i need to take a picture and i'm going to try to insert it in this video when I tell you that she loves this quilt. She really does. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty happy now. Okay, back to the embroidery. So this is still in the hoop that I was working in, so I do wanna put it in a, a nicer hoop to hang it on the wall. Um, but anyways, I did finish this cute little embroidery. And this was a stitch long that I did, and it is called the Cozy Quilt Embroidery. And the girl who designed it is on Instagram, and it's um, the Lemon Made Shop. So she has a couple books, I believe, on embroidery, and she had done this stitch along. So it was kind of fun because you learned all these different embroidery stitches. And then you have this cute little <laughs> wall hanging. So I do have just a little wooden hoop that I'm going to put it in, and I think I'm going to hang it in my sewing room somewhere. But, you know, I just haven't got to it yet. But I do really love embroidery, and I have a couple other embroidery projects coming up that I'm pretty excited about. So I will share those with you another time. But, yeah, this was really a fun project and a good way to learn different stitches if you are new to embroidery and you want to learn some of these um, more special stitches, this is a great way to do it. So yeah, there was, I've done embroidery for a long time, but there was a lot of stitches in here that I had never done before. So it was a good little project. And I'm happy with how it turned out and I think it'll look adorable hanging in my sewing room. So that was good. So the next thing that I finished was I made some hair bows for my granddaughters. Um, I think I did it for Valentine's Day. It's been so long. <laughs> um, I think it was Valentine's Day. So for my older granddaughter, I did little clips because her hair is often in pigtails. So I did two little clips, one for each side. And then for the baby, I did hair bands with little bows on. So of course, they're long gone and have been used over and over again. So I will insert pictures here of those. But... Um, they're a really fun project if you have little granddaughters and some scraps of fabric they are so fun to make and you can make any kind of bow I I tried different ones you can find some patterns online for just the shape of the bow and um, they were all I just found all free ones I didn't pay for any um, because really it's just 
the shape that you need to cut out to make the bow. So, um, yeah, I would highly recommend making them. They're, they were a lot of fun, and my granddaughters were so excited to get them, which is kind of funny because they're just hair bows. But, yeah, the older one, she was really thrilled to have all these new hair bows. So I'll definitely be making more in the future. And um, I tried to just do a, a variety of fabrics that were fairly neutral that would go with pretty much anything. So... I will try to insert pictures so you can see what they look like, but they did turn out really cute. And then when I gifted them to them, I, I just took some cardboard and, um, just had them on the cardboard. And so they looked really cute and professional, but they were just grandma's homemade hair bows. But anyways, they've been well used. So I'm really happy about that too. So I don't necessarily have a specific pattern for that, but, um, I just, I just looked on the internet and I was able to find some cute little shapes to, to try out. So some of them turned out maybe a little bigger than I would have liked, especially for the hair bands, but um, some of them are really, really cute. So my next finished object is the Goldwing sweater. And I know, <laughs> I know I talked about this before. And funny enough, because when I did my last podcast, I said, by the time I podcast next, I'm going to be done this sweater. So at least, at least I did that. <laughs> so this is the Goldwing sweater. And this is by Jennifer Steingass. And I love it so much. Now, it does have a lot of cat hair on it. But what a beautiful yoke pattern. I haven't blocked this yet. So um, I'm hoping it'll block out really nicely. Now you'll see I haven't woven my ends yet. Um, so I finished this a while ago and I tried it on and I was a little worried that it was a little short in the body. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it longer or not. So right now I'm just waiting because so for those of you who've been watching me before, you know that I had some knee surgery last year and unfortunately it has not healed well at all. So I am facing more knee surgery in the fall. So this time they're replacing my knee. So um, because I've had a bad knee for multiple years now, I've actually put on a lot of weight. So I'm hoping to lose some weight once this knee is usable again because I can't even, I can't even go for a walk. Like my knee hurts that much. So um, I'm not getting any exercise and it's not good. It's not good. So I'm just, I don't want to make this longer and then lose a little bit of weight and then it's too long. So right now I'm just waiting. I'm going to wait till the fall and then make up my mind because otherwise it fits really well. So it just, and the other thing is when I tried it on, I tried it on with like sweatpants. And then I wondered if I tried it on with jeans, if maybe it wouldn't have looked so short, you know, because your sweatpants just <laughs> kind of look frumpy anyway. So, <laughs> so I need to try it on again with a pair of jeans, and I think I'm just going to wait and make my decision in the fall. So, but other than that, it is very pretty pattern, and she writes a great pattern. Um... Some of my Zoom knitting friends, we decided to do a Jennifer Stein gas knit along. So we were all knitting one of her patterns. Now, a few of us chose this one because it's just so pretty. But anyways, the yarns that I used were yarns that I've had sitting around for a long time. So that was good. So this darker color is a Cascade. Cascade 220 Heather in the color 9642. It's a gorgeous color. So I have, I don't know if these are full, but probably pretty close. So um, I'm not sure what I'll make with those, but put those back in my stash. And then I, the contrast color was this Rowan Pure Wool Worsted, which I had left from another project that I had made last year. And this is color number 00162. So I still have more of this. <laughs> this is uh, going really far. So 
Um, yeah, so I might do another color work project with these two colors again, maybe some mittens or a hat, or, you know, I can mix them up with other things. But um, anyways, those are the yarns that I used and I'm super thrilled with this sweater. I just have to figure out the length. <laughs> And then I can sew in those ends and get that in the cupboard ready for fall. So what's next? Okay, next I made these little outfits for my granddaughters. And if you've watched my podcast before, you know that I've made these same patterns before and I'm definitely getting my money's worth out of these patterns. So the little tops that I made, I made from this pattern. I did these little tank tops. And this is the Wixton smock top and dress pattern. And these pattern, this pattern I think goes up to a size seven. So I can still make some more. I still haven't made the long sleeve one yet, but maybe this fall I will make them some. But I have done this one uh, quite a few times now and then the little shorts are this pattern which is also a Wixton pattern and it's called the baby and toddler bloomers and pants and so this pattern also has like uh, long pants as well which I haven't made yet but I've made these again <laughs> many times and this is such a quick sewing project very gratifying <laughs> so I decided to make my granddaughter's little matching outfits for the summer and here we are July and they don't have them yet <laughs> so that's why I had a podcast right away because I'm going to see them on Wednesday and I'm going to give them these so here's the first little top so this one's for the baby and let's see this is for big sister they're so cute little flowers little pockets on the sides. I put zippers in the back this year because it just calls for a button here with like an elastic around the button, but last year the elastic kept breaking. So this year I decided to just put some zippers in instead. Oops. Zipper stuck. <laughs> uh, there must be a thread there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I just put little zippers in this year make it so much easier to get them on and off and not have to worry about that elastic breaking again. So yeah, I thought those were super cute and I made these little shorts. These are the bigger ones, but mm, see where are the baby ones? They're so cute. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of wrinkly, but um, these are the little shorts that I made to go with it. So I thought it was a good combination of fabrics. Not too matchy matchy, but they look cute together. So yeah, one for baby sister and one for big sister. And then I made another set. Oh, my cat's like curled up in the quilt now. <laughs> and this is the other set that I made. This one has little kitty cats on it. So cute. And then these are the little shorts to go with them. I thought they were so cute. And last year when I made, I made a couple of these sets for uh, the oldest granddaughter for last summer and she wore them a lot. And my daughter really liked them because the shorts always stayed on because my granddaughters aren't aren't big girls and so a lot of the time the shorts they make in the stores are just too big and they're always falling off and um, they're just nice and cool because they're just a thin cotton so anyways very cute this one you can see more of the except for the wrinkles it's not helping but there's um, like this is a panel in here and then the, the middle panel at the front yeah, and a side panel. And then in the back, there's a panel down the back as well. And then the little pockets. They can store all kinds of treasures in their pockets because kids love to do that, don't they? And here's one for the B 
big sister. And another pair of little shorts. Hers just aren't quite so little anymore. <laughs> yeah. So um, I did, I'm trying to think what sizes I did. Hmm. I think I did probably the six to 12 month for the baby and the two year, two to three, I think it is, uh, for the older one. So yeah, so I will get those to them this week and they can wear those for the next couple months. I wish I had got them to them sooner, but you know, life, life just gets too busy. Okay, so that was those. Now the next one is one of the ones I will have to insert a video for, but hands down, probably the, my most favorite thing I've ever made. So I made a book for my littlest granddaughter for Easter this year. So she was, how old was she at Easter? Like eight months, seven, eight months. And of course I couldn't get her chocolate or anything. So I was trying to think of something fun that I could do for her. And I saw this pattern and it's by, I think I wrote it down over here. Yes, it's, you can find it at hearttohand.com and it's called the Zoo Book. So I printed it out purchased it and printed it out and I just put all the pieces in this envelope because there's a lot of pieces but this is what it looks like so this is like the front cover and then these are all the pages and this is the back cover so I made it all with uh, just linens cottons uh, there's some felt in it there's quite a bit of embroidery oh it is so cute. It was just adorable. It was a lot of work. I won't lie. It took an incredible amount of time, but it did turn out really, really cute. And she loves it. It was totally worth the effort, but yeah, it was, it's not, it's not a whip together at the last minute type of project. <laughs> I spent so much time on this thing and I probably started it later than I should have. And I was working like all day, every day on this thing for a while. So if you want to make one, I highly recommend it. And the pattern's great. Just don't leave it to the last minute. But anyways, this is the zoo book. So I did take a video of it because I was so happy with how it turned out. So I'm really hope sorry. I'm really hoping I can get that video in here so you can see um, how cute it turned out. I made this little book for my youngest granddaughter for Easter, and I just had to show you. This might be one of the my favorite things I've ever made. I think it is so cute. It was very time consuming, but it was really fun. And um, yeah, I I really hope this becomes like a one of those things that her mom keeps in her, you know, memory box or whatever for, for her own children, because it really was a labor of love. And yeah, I think it's just adorable. So anyways, this is a book. Now I put my zoo, you can put the child's name there, but I decided not to. So, um, and I'll put the details on the pattern, um, in my podcast, cause I don't have that information with me right now. And I'm actually trying to get this done because my family's coming over soon. So. <laughs> so anyways, here's the book, my zoo. So there's a little felt cat on the front. So all the stitching you do by hand. And then the little green felt eyes. And then the first page is the bunny. And as you can see, she has quite a bit of embroidery on her. And the arms are loose. So babies can play with her. And the little baby comes out and she's a finger puppet. And she has little ribbon ears and string to her little hands to play with. So isn't she just adorable? Oh my goodness. And then we have the lion. So he's mostly made of felt. This is a quilting cotton that I just blanket stitched on. Um, but the rest is all felt. His nose was supposed to be embroidered here, but I ended up using felt instead. Oh, and his ears, <laughs> so cute. Yeah, so he didn't have maybe as much embroidery, although there's a lot that you can't really see because 
I stitch it all around here and in here you can see my blanket stitch some French knots there Good little cheeks yeah so he's really cute oh and here's his tail and it actually hangs out the bottom of the book which I think is really cute <laughs> And the next page is a giraffe, and with her, her little ears loose to play with. She's made of linen, and this is felt here. Here's some quilting cotton in there, some felt. Um, this is some more linen, and this is all felt here. And I should say the bunny was all made of linen and quilting cotton here. And here's the elephant also made of linen and the ears and the trunk or actually the ears the hands and the trunk are all loose for little little hands to play with and there's a little mouse and her tail hangs out at the bottom of the book as well so there's quite a bit of stitching on here too around the ears and the trunk these tusks I guess they're called her eyes and all these lines little mouse <laughs> so cute so the mouse is a quilting cotton and then um, some felt for the ears and then this is linen and quilting cotton and next is the bear which might be one of my favorites I think it's adorable <laughs> his little bow tie so the bear again is made out of linen and some cute embroidery there's quite a bit of embroidery on this one but the, the arms are loose again and the ears. This is really cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> and then the zebra. This one is made out of linen again and some felt. This is felt. This is some yarn that I put on for the mane. I was going to use like a black and white striped fabric, but I didn't have any. So I was just trying to use what I had. And her little ears. And then the back cover says love grandma anyways i had to share this with you because i do think it's the cutest thing ever it's just adorable but it was a lot of work and i don't know if you can tell but each page has some batting in it so it's just really nice and soft and yeah i think this is going to be perfect for the baby she's just seven months old so i think this is going to be perfect for her but it's definitely um a unique gift and my daughter loved it. And she said, like, she'll keep it forever. So those are the kind of, you know, responses you like for the things that we make. So, so that was great. And then for the older daughter for Easter, of course, I had to make her something too. So she really loves stuffed animals. Like, no kid I've ever seen <laughs> before. She, she, uh, <coughs> sorry. She lines them all up on the couch every day and she drags them all over the place and oh she's so cute with her stuffed animals so i decided to make her um one of the little cotton rabbits uh patterns so i did uh, i didn't write down exactly what it's called but i did the bunny so i did the bunny and i did her some little clothes so i was trying to think of what yarn i had used for that and i know the bunny itself, I used, it was a Cascade 220, and I held it together with mohair, so it was a little bit fuzzy, and then um, her clothes were mostly just made out of, like, mini skeins or whatever I had, like, leftovers that I had, so um, she turned out really cute, and my granddaughter likes her, so that's great, and yeah, the one day she they pop by and I went out to the car to see them and she had her little bunny in the car and the, I had made the bunny a sweater but she had taken the sweater off and told me that it was too hot today for her sweater so that was cute but she had her little dress on and so I think over time I'll make her some more clothes for her little bunny and I might try to make some of the other animals as well I feel like there's so many things that I want to make for them I just do not have the time to make all the stuff that I would like to make but um, yeah they're fun to have to make things for so here's the bunny I made for my oldest granddaughter she's two so I think this is 
a great gift for her. She loves stuffed animals. So I'm really hoping she's going to love this bunny. So the bunny is from the Little Cotton Rabbits patterns. And you can get those on Ravelry. So she's wearing her little cardigan, which I held with a strand of mohair. And as you can see, I forgot to do the garter ridges on this side of the band, but somehow I don't think the two-year-old's gonna care, so I didn't bother to go back and fix it. And I played a serious game of yarn chicken with that white yarn, so I'm just happy I had enough. <laughs> so under here, she's wearing a little short sleeve dress which is also one of the Little Cotton Rabbits patterns. It's from her textured dresses pattern. And in the back, I'm doing this with one hand, so this is a little tricky. You see here, in the back, I just did a little tie at the top so that we didn't have to worry about buttons, even though I put a button on the cardigan. And here's her little fluffy tail and her little these are supposed to be underwear, but we'll call them shorts. And then over here, I put one of my little labels on. So she can always remember that her grandma made it for her. <laughs> so I really hope she loves it. I think she will. She really loves stuffed toys. She has her little shoes on. Now, in the pattern, you can do the, the legs, like striped, like they're wearing tights, but... I decided not to do that because then that way if I make her some different dresses I don't have to worry about it not matching her tights or whatever so I thought we'd just do her little bunny legs instead oh and for the the bunny I <clears throat> I will put in the video which yarn I used but I did hold it with mohair so she does have a nice little halo she does look like a cute little bunny so she's going to be gifted to my granddaughter today so the last finish is a pair of shorty socks. So this is actually the first pair of shorty socks that I've made. And yeah, I can see that, <laughs> I can see why people like making shorty socks. This is a quick project. So um, yeah, I decided I just need some, some shorties for the summer and, or the cool, or the warmer weather. So this pink color, is um katia has these little balls of yarn they're how many grams let me see 25 grams and um a local store here has a whole selection of different colors so i picked these up a while ago thinking i would use them for like heels heels and toes but um, yeah, I ended up using them for the, the main part of the sock. So I used two of these 25 gram balls and from each of them I had just this little bit left. So they're not enough to do a full shorty sock because I had done the heels, toes, and this little band in a contrasting color, but yeah, it's a nice yarn to work with and there's such a nice variety of colors. And they're all like solid colors like this, which I find is kind of hard to find with sock yarns. Most sock yarns are very variegated or like self-striping or whatever. So it's nice to have just a plain pink. And then this heel and toe and this little bit at the top is um, a Legacy Fiber Arts mini that I had, which is really a pretty, pretty color. I really love Legacy Fiber Arts, her dyeing technique. I don't know what it is, but she is spot on with her dyeing. Yes, she, I find sometimes with um, indie dyed yarns, it can be very pooly or uneven, but hers, no, hers is really well done. So yeah, that's um, one of theirs. So yeah, so this is just a shorty pair of socks. So what I did for this pair, for the pattern, I have um, the pattern called the Red Robin Socks by Helen Stewart. And I did a full size pair of socks out of them last year, or out of that pattern, and I really liked it. So I just took the pattern, like the stitch pattern off of it, and just used it on the top here for the shorty pair of socks. So they have a cute little texture to them and yeah.
just a fun pair of shorties. So, and that's it. So you would think in six months I would have made more than that, but no, I didn't. Uh, I also forgot to tell you that within that six months, I did get COVID. So I had avoided it till Easter and then I got it and I got it pretty good. So um, thankfully, you know, nothing major. I still have a residual cough sometimes though, which is hard to believe, but that's all I have. So I'm grateful for that because I know lots of other people have had it far worse. So I'll just be grateful. <laughs> so next is works in progress. And really, I don't have a lot. Um, I feel like in the last maybe month, my knitting mojo is kind of gone. So I don't know if it's just because I'm busy with um, so many catch up projects and, you know, all the outdoor work that has to get done at this time of year. Or what it is, I don't know, but I haven't really, I haven't really been knitting much, but I'm sure it will come back soon. So I'm not too worried. So here are my works in progress. So the first one is another Musselberg hat and it's all twisted here. There we go. So this yarn was gifted to me by a friend and it's a sparkle yarn which I i don't think I've ever bought a spark, sparkle yarn. <laughs> but as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, my granddaughters would love this. So I was trying to think of what I could make for them besides socks because I had a whole skein. So I decided to make this muscle bear cat. And it, so it's self-striping, sparkly, pink, everything a little girl loves, right? <laughs> So for this one, um, I was working on this as like, a, like when I'm out and about kind of project, but my plan for this one is to do the second half in just a solid color. So that way it would be like having two hats. So sh they would have this hat and then you could totally flip it the other way and have just a plain pink hat. So that's my goal. So I'm just, these are going to fall off the needle. Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't know how much further I have to go. Um, so I need to measure this and then check the pattern to see. So that's why it kind of got put aside. But I think it'll be really cute. And then I thought if I did it long enough to like do the cuff on it, then they would have this side with like a pink cuff or the pink hat with this, this cuff. So um, yeah. So that's what I'm planning to do for them. And there'll be enough here to do them both a hat if I only do, you know, the one side in the striped. So then I was thinking, you know, how, you know how these things go. So then I was thinking, wouldn't it be cute to have little sweaters that match these hats? Like just one of the pinks or turquoise or something. So we'll see. I'm kind of going down a rabbit hole now, I think. <laughs> so, but, you know, uh, it'll be fun. So I think they'll like those colors especially the older girl, she's, she'll, she's big enough to um, give an opinion on what she likes. And then I st started another Musselberg hat. As you can see, this is my like favorite project right now. <laughs> and maybe, you know, because my mojo is a little low, maybe I just need to knit a whole bunch of these over the summer because I do really enjoy this project. So this is another one. So this one's almost done. I just have a little bit more to do and then I can do the decreases. So I'm thinking that this is going to be a gift for Christmas and I think I know who it's going to get, who's going to get it, but I won't say. Um, yeah, so this yarn is, um, it's a Madeline Tosh, the Tosh Merino Light and the color was a one of a kind colorway. And this yarn was also gifted to me, so that's very sweet actually by the same person who gave me the other yarn. <laughs> I have a dear, dear friend who is very generous to me with yarn and fabric sometimes. So I'm very grateful. So this is one of the ones she gave me. So yeah, the person who I'm planning to give this to for Christmas has a darker sort of cranberry color coat. So I think this will go really nice with it. Actually, looking at it in here, you can see like this end is quite
quite a bit darker than the middle. <laughs> you don't notice it so much in person, but you notice it on the camera. But anyway, so that's another muscle bear cat. And then I just have one other work in progress, and this is another shorty pair of socks. So I did finish one. Put this on a sock blocker. So I, I have a bin with like mini skeins and I have a couple like 50 gram skeins. So I keep them all in this basket and generally I go in there for heels and toes and cuffs. But this pink yarn here was a 50 gram skein and it's by Artfill yarns and I picked it up at the Toronto's Toronto Knitters Frolic years ago <laughs> and it's just kind of been sitting so I thought oh I'll just make a pair of socks with that but I wasn't sure if it would be enough to do a full pair because it was only 50 grams which now I know is not enough for my size so when I got to the toe I weighed this yarn and I had exactly 25 grams <laughs> left so I used a contrast for the toe. And so, um, yeah. And this was just a mini, I believe it's also from Legacy Fiber Arts. And um, yeah, so I'll have enough to do the pair now. Now I will say with this yarn, I was really excited about it at first. You can see here, like from there up, it was knitting out really nicely. And then all this pulling started which I don't like, to be honest, I don't like it. So, and like here, look how, like there's no pink in here. This just looks, <laughs> I don't like this look. But anyways, I almost ripped them out and I thought, you know what, they're just socks. This whole part's gonna be in my shoe. So, um, yeah. So I'm a little disappointed because it was like, look, to hear look how pretty that was and then it just kind of went downhill after that so anyway so not my favorite and this is you know when I talk about legacy fiber arts and how much I love how they dye their yarn and lay family yarns is the same this doesn't happen this doesn't happen so you know I guess we and I know some people don't mind this some people love it it's just not my thing so for me I I need to stick to dyers that I, I know that this is not going to happen because uh, it's just, yeah, it's just not the look I'm after. And then you're kind of disappointed. But anyways, I thankfully had this mini that I thought blended really nicely with them. So, um, yeah. so soon I'll have another pair and I will wear them because like I said, it's just a pair of socks, but like I would never gift those to somebody because I don't like the way it looks, but that's just me. That's just me, I'm just picky, stuff like that. So anyways, here's the second sock. I just did a little bit of the cuff at uh, when I was out knitting with some friends. So I need to get moving on that. And then I'll have another pair of shorty socks. And I wanna just keep going through this bin of um, minis and scraps because I think it's a great way to use up stuff like that. And um, I have a few pairs already planned in my head of like stripey pairs and stuff to, to use up mini skeins. So that's great. Um, okay, what else do we have? I need some water. <laughs> okay, so just a couple more little things that I wanted to chat about. One is, um, of a project that I'm considering working on. I do have an embroidery project that I'm going to be working on very soon that I'm really excited about, but I don't really want to say anything about it just in case the wrong person watches this um, and spoils the surprise, but it's going to be really good. So I definitely will show that on my next podcast because uh, there's a timeline on that one. So, and another thing I want to start working on is possibly making this sweater. I'm just looking to see if I have the right yarn for it. Um, I could either do a v-neck or a little rounded neck, but it's really hard to see in the white. But it just has a lot of texture and some embroidery on it. 
and I just thought it would be really sweet for the baby's first birthday. But we'll see. If I don't have the right yarn for it, I probably won't go out and buy it just because I have other yarn that I really need to get using. So um, I also had made this one for my oldest granddaughter when she was born. And unfortunately it felted um, when she was quite little. So the baby never got to wear it. So I thought, well, maybe I could just make her this one um, in a bigger size. So I don't know, but I would like to make her something special for her first birthday. Um, so that's on my radar, but her birthday's next month. So <laughs> if I'm going to do it, I need to get cracking. So there's that. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was an acquisition that I made. Now, I don't talk about all my acquisitions because, you know, I know, you know we're not all in the same financial bracket. We can't all treat ourselves, you know, so I don't want to be showing stuff. And like I said, I have a friend who's extremely generous to me when it comes to yarn. And so I'm not going to show that on here, but I wanted to share this dyer with you because, um, I think her yarn is unique and because I was very excited to find her. I, um, as I'm sure, you know, if you've watched any of my podcasts, I really love soft, pretty colors. And I find it very difficult to find the colors that I love in indie dyed yarns. Not that it's impossible. That's like one of the reasons why I love Lay Family Yarns. Her colors are exactly <laughs> what I love. But it's just diff more difficult when, you know, she's in the UK. Um, if she was here, I would be in big trouble <laughs> because I love all of her colors. But I was trying to find a Canadian dyer who has the same sort of aesthetic as Lay Family Yarns. And I did find one who is very similar. Now she, I would say Lay Family Yarns, most of her yarns are very soft, gentle, pretty colors. And this dyer that I found, she's called Bramble Ridge and she's in British Columbia. She has a bit of a mix of stuff. So she has the soft, pretty colors, but she also has more saturated colors as well. So I think something for everybody, I would say, maybe not if you're really into really bright stuff, but anyways, I decided to place an order with her. Um, and I had a hard time deciding which ones to buy. Now I bought these quite a while ago and I haven't used them yet because I was just saving them to show you because I was so excited about it. So, um, yes, her name's, her company name is Bramble Ridge. And like I said, she's in British Columbia. I think she's in, yes, Mission, British Columbia. So here's one of the ones I got. And as you can see, so many beautiful colors, not deeply saturated. This is probably the darkest one that I have in my, well, maybe not, but one of the darkest ones, but wow, so pretty. So this one is called You Blew It, and this is an 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon DK. So perfect for a hat, for sure. So actually you could do DK socks with this one. Hmm, <laughs> that's probably what's gonna happen now. Anyway, Bramble Ridge. So this is one of the ones I got. And here's another one. This one is an 8515 Merino Nylon Fingering and the color is Petal. But just look at that. So pretty. Some speckles. And just very light, pretty color. So there's another one. Here's another one. This one was like a, mm, I guess just like a mini, not a mini, but is it 50 grams? Doesn't say, oh yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Anyways, this color is cotton candy, but this is not a full skein. I think it was just like a one-off kind of thing. Very pretty. 
And then she sent this one. And this one I think is absolutely stunning. It's hard, it's showing up lighter in the camera than it really is. It's absolutely gorgeous. The color is Ocean Eyes. This would make a stunning Musselberg hat. And then she sent me these um, um, wool wash bars that she has. This one came untaped, but <laughs> she has these wool wash bars that I believe she said, yes, they're also made in Mission, British Columbia. And they are orange and cedar scent wool wash bars. And then I also got some minis. So this one here, again, see the soft, now there's a dark color, but it's so beautiful. So there's that set and there's this set and there's this set. So um, she did send some of this that I could do a giveaway. So I'm definitely going to do that. So I'm going to, I have to decide which set of minis I'm going to give away. And I'm also going to give away one of these wool wash bars. And then I'm going to throw in um, a project bag that I will make to go along with this. So this is gonna be a giveaway coming up. Um, we say this week. I'm going to say this week. I'm going to commit myself to this week. We're going to get this done. So be watching on Instagram for that. I will do it on Instagram. And um, yeah, definitely check out Bramble Ridge. Her yarns are gorgeous. Service was great. Yeah, I'm really excited about these yarns. So it's been hard not to cast on waiting to do this podcast. <laughs> so I can see the muscle bird coming in this one and maybe this one too. Now, like I was saying with that Musselberg pattern, there's so many different variations. You could probably, I could probably even use this DK. This would make a stunning hat. Anyways, I wanted to share that dyer with you. So um, definitely check her out and definitely be watching my um, Instagram for the giveaway. And yeah, so hopefully somebody else gets the pleasure of trying some of this beautiful yarn as well. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, sorry, it took me six months to come back here. <laughs> Hopefully that's not going to happen again, but I am going to make no promises this time because we know how that turns out. Um, uh, what else do I need to say? Um, follow me on Instagram and I will put my handle down below so you can find me there and watch out for this giveaway coming and hmm, is there anything else i needed to tell you i feel like there is and i feel like i can't remember what it is but i don't know oh one thing i do want to tell you is while i've been not here i have had time to do some shopping online and so i have an abundance of Rifle Paper Company fabrics that are is all gonna be sewn into bags and put in my shop. So if you like Rifle Paper Company fabrics, you're gonna be very happy because I have scored so many beautiful ones and they're not always easy to catch. You know, you have to be quick on these updates. So um, I do have one store that I shop with a lot that I'm not gonna tell you who it is because <laughs> then I'm going to be in trouble getting my rifle paper fabrics. But um, as soon as I see her updates, I get on them. So I have a lot and I'm pretty excited about some of the bags that are going to be coming to the shop. And now I am I am getting a little more time to work on stuff like that. So um, hopefully soon. But once um, I get an update ready, I will post it on Instagram. So watching Instagram is the best place to find out about uh, the restocks and um, 
Yeah, definitely. If you're interested in rifle paper, you want to watch my Instagram <laughs> because I got such good fabrics and I got some of the older ones, which are really hard to get. So I am super excited. I even got the Alice in Wonderland one, which I've never been able to get before. And I have two pieces of it. So very excited. So anyways, I hope you have a fantastic summer. Hopefully it's not going to be too long before I'm back here, but like I said, I'm not making any promises or commitments. Um, yeah, and I hope you're doing well and you're healthy and able to enjoy the summer and get out and get some fresh air. Hopefully you have a beach nearby or somewhere nice you can go and relax. So I will talk to you soon. If you ever want to reach out to me, you can do that through Instagram. You can DM me there and I'd be happy to chat with you. And anyways, enjoy your knitting, take care, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.